Now, in the last lesson, we looked at how we can implement a CSS style and apply it to all instances of a particular HTML element on a single page. So we changed the style for our horizontal rule and by adding this internal CSS to our index.html page, we managed to affect the style of all the horizontal rules on the same page. Now we're going to take it one step further and we're going to change our website that uses internal CSS to external CSS. And to do that, we first have to create a new folder in our personal site. So I'm going to create a new folder that's called simply CSS. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file. And that file is going to be called styles.css. So with that extension, the browser will recognize it as a CSS file. So once you hit enter, you'll see that we have this brand new file called styles.css. And we're going to move our code for the body and the horizontal rule over to this page. I'm going to hit save and we're going to remove this style tag. So now if I hit save and I refresh our website, you can see that all the style that we've applied is now gone because we've deleted it from the style tag in the header. Now, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new link. And if you write link and you hit enter, then it will autofill to say that this link has a relationship of something called the style sheet. So when your browser reads your web page, it'll go from the top to the bottom. And once it hits this line, it'll see that, oh, this is where the style sheet for this web page resides. And I can go over here to fetch it. Now we need to change this href to point towards our styles.css. So the first thing we need to change is the file name. Our file is not called master.css, it's called styles.css. And the other thing that we have to change is this forward slash here. Now, if an href starts off with a forward slash, then it's pointing towards the root of your website. It's saying that you'll find this file inside a folder called CSS inside the root of your website. Now we're going to talk about the root a little bit later on, especially once we start getting into JavaScript. But for now, just know that when you have a static website that's not yet hosted anywhere, you can't tap into this file using the root. So instead, we're going to say that this file resides in a folder called CSS and it's on the same level as this current file. So index.html is here and on the same level as it, there is a folder called CSS inside of which there is a file called styles.css. And that is going to be our style sheet. So your browser then takes this file here, then applies all of these styles to the specified elements inside your index.html. So let's hit save and let's refresh our page to make sure that it worked and it has. So this is what we call the external CSS. And if we apply this style sheet to our contact me page, as well as our hobbies page, then you'll see that once we go to it, then you'll see that all of our styles gets applied across all three pages. And all we had to do is just to add this simple link that points towards this external style sheet. And anything that we change in this single location will affect all three web pages. So we'll know that the style is consistent across all three pages. Now, as a challenge, I want you to select the H1 and the H3 elements on all three pages. And I want you to change its color property to this particular color that we had on Color Hunt. So 66BFBF. And by the end of it, you should end up 
with your site looking similar to this, where on all three pages, the H1s and the H3s are colored in this new shade. Now, remember, if you don't know which CSS property to change, or if the property that you're trying to change isn't working, you can always go to Google and say, change text color CSS. And that will help you figure out which property you need to change. So go ahead, pause the video and give it a go. All right, so how did that go? Well, if you had any difficulty figuring out which property you need to change, because it's a property that we haven't used before, then you needed to look at some of the documentation. And in this case, for example, changing the text using CSS, the first thing that it talks about is changing the text color, which is exactly what we want to do. And it tells you that the property that you need is something called color. And you can specify the color just as we did before for the background color with a name or with a hex value or with an RGB value. So our value that we had was here, which is 66BFBF. We're going to copy it and we're going to go into the styles.css, so our external style sheet, and we're going to select the element that we want to change, which is the H1 as well as the H3. And the property that we want to change was called color. And the value that we're going to give it is the hex code 66BFBF. And we want that to be true in both cases. So now if you hit save and you go over to your site and you hit refresh, then the black text becomes that nice green turquoisey color. And the changes are also reflected in hobbies and contact me. So did you get that right? Did you manage to figure out which property you needed to change? If yes, then great, perfect. If you want to take this challenge even further, then you can style the text in more ways than we've specified here by looking through the documentation and changing anything that you want to change. So for example, it's a bit odd to have the H1 the same color as the H3. So you could differentiate those two by making the styles of each of them different. Now, if you've created something wonderful, wacky, or completely different from what I have, then it's a good time to show off what you've done and head over to the Q&A section and show all of your fellow students and post a screenshot of what your website looks like and which CSS properties you changed in order to achieve it. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to look at some potential bugs that you might come across and ways in which you can help yourself by diagnosing what the problem is and how you can fix it yourself. So we're starting to learn about the important skill of debugging. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.